You better not forget to stay tuned for a little later in the show for another edition of Final Take. Stephen A. once again has the floor. You've been killing it all week, I must say. I like the range you've been showcasing here. What can we expect a little later? Yeah, did someone else break your heart we should know about? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, you I'll know fight what? her no, for you. Nobody broke my heart, and nobody, bro nobody else broke my heart in that fashion. At least, at least, at least not last night. But I will say <laughs> that I have some things on my mind. I don't, I, I don't even need, I don't even need to read about it. I'm just gonna speak from the heart and off the cuff. I got something to say. You'll find out who it's about when it's yeah, time. Yeah, you are. Can't I wait. I told Stephen A. we had to end the bromance after last night because mm. I was gonna have to get him at the debate desk today. Yeah. And I think that he may be a little broken up about that. Yeah, it could, that well, could be it potentially. Yeah, yeah. How, 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 how about more like tired? I've been up since uh, until around 1.32 in the morning, you know what I'm saying? So that's why let's you're losing these that, debates? Let's not forget that, Max Kellerman, who was in bed, tucked in by 10 o'clock. Oh, I mean, let's, let's not forget that. But let's, all right. All right. Stephen A., we're looking forward to I'm it tired. as I'm tired. I ain't going to lie. But right now, uh, we want to get into a little Watergate. Is trying to do that water bottle challenge where he has it land and stand up. That's what it's been reduced to. Unsuccessfully, I might add. Well, <laughs> Kyrie Irving just missed. Here goes James, and nope. Well, again, this is what the game has come to. We're watching whether or not Santa leads early, and they're playing the, ball, the game with the bottle. Can anyone say bored? LeBron and company were having a good old time in last night's blowout victory over the Knicks, so much so that they were getting into a little water bottle challenge action from the bench. In case you're new to the water bottle challenge, basically you're trying to flip a bottle on its end, all while the game's still going on. Stephen A., what do you make of this happening during the game at the Garden? Uh, they were not bored at all. They were having fun and f perfectly willing to humiliate the Knicks on the basketball court and humiliate uh, Phil Jackson in front of Garden fans. LeBron James is a professional extraordinaire. He's incredibly classy. He's one of those individuals that would respect the competition enough to refrain from doing that kind of thing during a game. Yeah, feigning the pictures and having fun and doing all of these little handshakes and all of that stuff before a game is different. But once the game is beginning, has begun, once the game is in process, he would never be so flagrantly disrespectful. This is emanating from what he perceived to be Phil Jackson's disrespect towards him and his quote unquote posse. And he came to the garden hell bent on making Phil Jackson pay for it and embarrassing him in every way. And the other players joined in. We showed the sound coming into commercial break, Max with what Kyrie Irving said and how he was joking around about the water bottle contest. Kyrie Irving is one of the best dudes you'll ever meet, an incredibly decent dude, really good people, and we all know what a great player he is. Have you ever heard any words like that come out of his mouth, joking around and all of that stuff about something that transpired during the game? They did not care because they wanted to embarrass and they wanted to humiliate Phil Jackson, and they succeeded very, very conspicuously, I might add, in doing just that. It was a snub at Phil Jackson. He brought it on himself. And the line, Max, the line of the night came during the Clippers-Warriors game from Mark Jackson. He said LeBron James and his crew came to Madison Square Garden and handled their business. That's what he said. LeBron James and his friends came to the garden and handled their business. As as that was really the LeBron line James of the posse, night. You're okay. He did it on purpose. Well, well, you know what? Mark, Mark Jackson knew exactly what he was doing by saying that and bringing that up. And it was a beautiful comment on his part. Phil Jackson got embarrassed last night, he and did. LeBron James wanted everybody to know what little regard he had for him. Yeah, he did, and LeBron actually did the right thing. I told you yesterday, LeBron, what that was all about really was LeBron out Phil Jacksoning Phil Jackson. Right? Phil Jackson is shown off with the glow, and LeBron is Bruce Leroy, and it took him a while to get there, but he got there, and now he's... Whooping show enough's butt. I mean, that's what's happening. Phil Jackson throws shade because, as I said yesterday, it's Sun Tzu, the art of war. Undermine all Max. things in the land of your enemies. Yeah, can I not finish? Go ahead. What? what? Hold on. You brought up you. You brought up Bruce. You brought us Bruce, Bruce Leroy. Leroy. You can't just throw that out there okay. without Bruce Leroy. You can't just throw that out there without telling me. You gotta say it right, Max. When I say 
who's the baddest? <laughs> you say, <laughs> show nuts. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to do. Now go ahead. You got to do it right, one bro. You got to do it right. One of the great movies in the 80s, kids. Am I lying, right. Stephen A? Right. All exactly. Right. You ain't lying. You ain't lying. It's hilarious. And that's, Vanity was fine in there, too. That's, that's a different story, but go ahead. Marge I had the soundtrack. So, so that's what yeah. LeBron has done. He's reached that level of glow, of like formlessness, of he's on that Phil Jackson Jedi mind trick level now, and he's doing it better than Phil. And partly that's because, as I said, Sun Tzu undermine all things in the land of your enemies. That's why Phil Jackson always throws shade at the, at the team he thinks he has to beat. Yeah, unless your enemy has LeBron James and you're insisting on the triangle. Because guess what? Not only is it not going to work, you will be humiliated. It's much easier to do that when you have Jordan and Pippen. You were talking about this yesterday, Stephen A. Kobe and Shaq or Kobe and Powell and, and company. Much easier to do that when you have those guys. But what about when the other team has those guys? Ain't going to work. It's not working now. And LeBron is in his full glory at this point in his career because he's still physically good enough. I still don't think physically what he, want, what he was a couple of years ago, but he's good enough where he can hit that highest level when he needs it, and he's psychologically and emotionally dominating the NBA. He did it to Steph Curry on the court last year in the finals, dunking on him, blocking him, screaming on him, Steph not answering, and he's doing it to Phil Jackson now off the court on the bench playing the water bottle challenge. This is his world and everyone else just lives in it right now. Yeah, it's easy to say that when they're going up against the Knicks, you know. I mean, what a good, when the Knicks are playing against people, uh, at some juncture in any season, it seems to be everybody's night a little, every, every little once in a while when it comes against the Knicks. It's just a very, very sad thing for me. You might be right. Um, I just, I'm not thinking about it right now. I'm thinking about the humiliation accorded to Phil Jackson. I'm thinking about the fact that he deserves it. I'm thinking about the fact that this might end up being ha a, a habit because it's not like they're not capable of falling apart. I'm just tinkering towards that level of depression. I had no expectations last night. It came crashing down to earth as expected, which is what I was telling everybody before the game. Uh, but it doesn't... Um, it, it just doesn't change the level of depression that kicks in. Yeah, I'm a little tired. There's no doubt about that. But I'm more depressed. The New York Knicks, uh, they, they, just, they just ain't there, man. It just doesn't matter. Uh, you know, I, I just don't even know what to say anymore. I really, more really don't. I'm just disappointed that Phil Jackson's there. I just am. More importantly, I think you told on yourself a little bit in this segment. Let me ask you a question and answer this honestly. You were rooting for Shonoff, weren't you? You wanted him to beat Bruce Leroy, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yes, see, I knew yes, it. I, I knew it. The way you yes, said I that, I could tell. Yes, I did. Yeah. Yes, I, yes, I did. No, no, you talk about. No, no, no. I wanted them to give him a fight and what have you. But I, you, you right. I because Bruce Leroy. I mean, you know, I, I, I wasn't feeling him that yeah. much. I really, really yeah. wasn't. I was feeling show enough. Yeah, I really was. I rooted for Clever really Lang was. too. I mean, you know, sometimes you got to root for the antagonist. Yeah, I'm feeling really left out. I didn't root for Clubber Lang. I, I always, I always root for Rocky. I always root for Rocky. Oh, Clubber was the yo dude. Adrian. Rocky, that I know. All right, let's leave it there. Did you know Stephen A had to stay the whole game? Can you believe that? It's, uh, it's unbelievable. Poor guy, so tired. Coming up next, what game? it is Throwback Thursday, and RG3 is ready to go. And the Browns plan to start him on Sunday. But should the days of RG3 starting be over? Do not miss that discussion next. And Marvin Lewis says he doesn't feel the hot seat in Cincinnati despite their poor season. Stephen A is about to unleash on the Bengals head coach. Don't miss it. How in God's name do you still have the head coaching job? Your record has to count for something. What about the citizens of Cincinnati? Does anyone care? Odell Beckham Jr. was livid after the officiating in the Giants lost to the Steelers this past Sunday, and he made it known post-game. Now ahead of the big NFC East clash with the Cowboys, he addressed the ref situation yet again. It doesn't surprise me. It like I said, every, everybody knows what's going on on the field. Everybody could see it. Stevie Wonder could see it. Um, it just, it is what it is. You can't do anything about it. There's no point. I don't even know why. I shouldn't even have brought it up because it, it's always a lose-lose situation, bringing something up. Uh, either you're speaking out on it and now you're trying to defend yourself or the other way around, you're complaining. So 
either way it goes, I, sh I should have probably never brought it up. It's, it's really irrelevant. Nothing's going to change. No calls are going to be made because of what I say now. Um, so you just got to keep playing. You know what you're going against. It's um, the Giants versus everybody, and, and I wouldn't want it any other way. Max, is it time to tell our boy Odell Beckham Kayate? Odell, you just said... You just said I shouldn't have brought it up. It wasn't going to make any difference anyway. And in the previous breath, called the refs blind. Here's the thing about Odell Beckham. The answer, Molly, is yes. And Stephen A. is yes. He needs to shut up. And I'm not saying take the fuel away from whatever he needs to get himself amped up to play. He's got to be true to himself. But in terms of calling out the refs, Shut all the way up. Odell, what are you doing? Stephen A., he's already, and we've been back and forth about this, he's the best receiver in football. And by the way, I think if you put everyone on a lie detector test, they would all say the same thing. Damn it, I hate him, I hate him, I hate him. But yeah, he's the best. I know respect to Julio Jones and Antonio Brown. They're beasts, I get it. But I think Odell is the best. Can you imagine for a second if he shut up and just worried about balling instead of all the other stuff. And I don't just mean as a, as a distraction to the team or whatever. He's not getting calls. He didn't get that one. When he asked the referee a question about it, refs told him to get out of his face. Odell, do you think you are going to get more or fewer calls when you call the refs blind? Smarten up, what are you doing? Already the best. If he just quieted down and maybe got a couple of those calls, he'd be even better. I don't know why he continues to do this. I disagree with you. I don't mind him talking at all. I mind the temper tantrums. He doesn't need to be going to the sidelines and kicking stuff and throwing stuff and, 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 and knocking the net into his head, you know, and all of that other stuff. He doesn't need to be doing that. But him voicing his concern about unfair treatment, I really don't have a problem with it, Max, and I'll tell you why. Uh, speaking, to some, speaking to some folks from the league office over the last few months, one of the things they've religiously talked about is how they view all the calls, a lot of non-calls, and how the officials are critiqued every week, every single week. They go through every single game with a fine tooth comb. They highlight what is made, they highlight what is missed, and the officials are judged accordingly. And it has something that has some impact as to whether or not they'll be around in the future. So Odell Beckham Jr. bringing attention to this under a control, in a controlled way, uh, in a controlled setting as well, I think is helpful. Because what it does is it raises the proverbial eyebrows of league officials who are going to go back to the tapes and view what he's talking about and come to a conclusion moving forward. That's what you have to do here. He doesn't need to be petulant. He doesn't need to be immature. He doesn't need to be creating a scene or anything like that. But sitting at his locker in a very controlled manner and expressing his dismay and concern over being out on that football field when he is specifically highlighting that rules are being broken according to what the NFL wants, what they say is legal and illegal, what they say is cool and not cool, I have no problem with yeah, that. But, Doesn't bother me Yeah, though. okay, fine, if he was doing it in a smart way, but do you think it's smart to insult the officials? The mature way to do it is say something like, ref's got a really tough job, I think they got that one wrong, I asked about it, I was told to get out of his face, so, you know, I did, I hope going forward, whatever. There's a conciliatory way to express that, a mature way to express it, versus using it as an opening and the fact that, hey, I'm sitting at my locker and they're putting cameras and mics in my face, I'm just answering the question. Using that as an opportunity but to take a sophomoric shot at the refs. Sophomore, not because it expresses anger. Good for you. You should be angry for not getting the calls. But because you're shooting yourself in the foot, it's going to make it harder for you when you call them blind. Yeah, but you didn't sit up there and, and, and talk about what he said. You said he should shut up. He shouldn't say anything. I'm saying to you, you don't insult the officials. And you don't draw a temple. You don't, you don't perform temple tantrums on the sideline. 
but there's absolutely nothing wrong in a mature and educated fashion highlighting the mistakes that the I mean officials by, are making yeah. and highlighting how it's putting you in jeopardy. That's what he I doesn't mean have by, to shut up. That's what he I just mean has to be smart up. about what he says. What do you think I mean by shut up? That if they ask him a direct question, he says no comment? No, of course you have to answer the question. Yeah. But don't and insult about the, officials, the refs. About the officials, that's exactly what I thought you were saying. No. Well, and, about and the officials, that's exactly plan. what I thought you were do saying. Do you think they got it right? You, everyone knows how to do this. What, do you got to go to a, a seminar on how to, to, to treat the media? Do you think they got it right? Ref's got a tough job. I, I thought that that was pass interference on me. And, I, you know, I, I hope that the league looks at it. You know, whatever. You can do it in a way that doesn't make it harder for you. Because what it shows me in terms of the issue of maturity is, is that you don't, you don't want to uh, postpone gratification, which is really the hallmark of maturity. He wants to, he feels angry, he wants to express it right then because it feels good to him in the moment without forethought about how that's going to affect him down the road. That is the definition of immaturity, and I would like him to respond maturely so that this transcendent talent at the position can stop this argument about who's better, him, Antonio Brown or Julio Jones, and take his rightful place in the hierarchy of at least receivers in the NFL as the number one guy. By the time he's done, I believe we will recognize this as the Odell Beckham Jr. era for receivers, but that's not going to be so clear if he continues to shoot himself in the foot. The question was whether or not he should shut up. I answered that he shouldn't, and I feel that way because I think the more he talks, the more it highlights what the NFL should do to hone in on these receivers. This dude is a superstar talent. He's legitimately box office. It might behoove the NFL to want to protect him instead of being arrogant enough to think people are going to watch their product anyway. Hope so. Hope so. I'm a Giants fan. I'd like to see them do well. As, as You're of a this, Giants fan? As of this moment, I've played in as many playoff games as Odell Beckham Jr. I told Odell and Victor Cruz last night at the game. They were at the Knicks game. First of all, New York Knicks you know, they're lucky to have those guys because I couldn't believe they both still stayed at the game until its very end. I was shocked because they should have left like everybody else. But I told them, you know what, as much as I would love for them to beat the Cowboys now, I don't mind them losing to the Cowboys now and waiting until the playoffs. But they got to get there. They're loyal. I appreciate that. I love when it gets personal for you, Max. The passion just really comes out. The steam coming out. And don't miss this coming up next. What these guys think about LeBron's water bottle challenge during last night's game at the Mecca. That's coming up right here on First Take. Man, the water bottle is just like, if you land it, you're just like a legend. So I was just trying to follow in the kids' footsteps and, and really just, man, put my mark on the water bottle challenge, man. Oh, man. It was awesome.